Thanks to all of you who've led us in music this morning and led us to consider the goodness of God. A number of you have visited with me before church about the, you were getting over the flu. Several of you had the flu for four days, three days a week. And we're glad that you're back with us this morning. And we hope that uh, if you've not had the flu, that you don't join that company. So uh, it's good to see you today. You have your Bibles. I would ask you to turn to Psalm 71. It is a psalm that asks us to reach back and remember the faith of our youth. Remember your faith when it was new. Remember your faith before you had the challenges of life. Martin Luther took a similar approach with his congregation in Wittenberg, Germany. He asked them to remember their baptism, which is an unusual thing to do because most everybody he was preaching to was baptized when they were infants. How can you go that far back? His intention was, do you Remember back to your baptism. Recall that, that moment when your faith became real to you. Remember that time when your faith was new. Before life had a few bumps and bruises, before the life was scattered the difficulties. Remember your faith when you were absolutely certain about things. Remember your baptism. It is the words of God at Jesus' baptism, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Do you remember your baptism? I remember mine. It was in Ropesville, Texas. First Baptist Church. I was recovering from the flu. I remember Bill Curry standing in that water of baptism. Some of you know Bill. He pastored in Last Buddy years before he was in Ropesville. He towered over me, raised his hand high in the air and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in death and raised to walk a new kind of life. I remember going under the water. I remember it was warm. I remember the bubbles and the swirl of that water. I remember coming out and wiping my face. I remember after the service, people said to me, they were proud of me. People said, God bless you. My mother said, do not go outside. Your hair is still wet. You've been sick. I remember going outside just for a little while because I didn't think that would really hurt anything. Do you remember your baptism? No matter how you feel today about faith, remember that time when your journey began. The 71st Psalm is divided into three sections. There is a complaint, a discussion of the complaint, and then a resolution of praise to God. For instance, verse 1, in you, O Lord, I, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. We're not certain what the circumstances are behind his request, but Lord, Lord, don't let me put to, be put to shame. Lord, protect me, raise me up, heal me. We're not sure what it is, but it ends with the eighth verse. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. He begins with, oh Lord, rescue me and don't let me be put to shame. And my mouth is filled with the praise of your glory. It is, it is complaint and then praise. Let's look at the second section and you'll develop the theme for the psalm in the second section. Do not cast me off in the time of my old age. I don't know if I've ever had more comments on the cover of the worship guide than I have this morning. Some of you think this psalm was written just for you. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. Lord, don't forget me. It ends with verse 17 in this section. Oh God, for my youth you have taught me and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. Then the 18th verse begins the third section. 
So, even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to all the generations to come. And then it ends with the 24th verse. The praise is, all day long my tongue will talk of your righteous help. For those who tried to do me harm have been put to shame and disgraced. All right, you caught the theme, I'm assuming. This is a theme of the psalmist's concern about God's care for them in old age. Lord, I was with you when I was young. You remember your grace to me when I was young. I said I would praise you forever. Lord, my life is changing. Don't forget me in my old age. Verse 6. Upon you I've leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually on you. I've been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in the time of my old age, and do not forsake me when my strength is spent. Since my birth, I've relied on you, Lord. You, you took me from my mother's womb. I have been with you since day one. You have been faithful you have been kind. You have protected me. I bet if we could sit down across the table from the psalmist, the psalmist would have some stories from his youth when the Lord protected him. I've got one. Driving my grandfather's farm pickup when I was too young to understand the nature of speed. Hitting a sandbar that had washed out out in the road and that pickup hit that and those tires gripped and that wheel went to the left and I have no idea why I didn't roll that pickup with Kyle Gleghorn sitting in the passenger seat. We rocked it back to the right, we rocked it again to the left and then back to the right and it settled in the road and not in the ditch on its top. And I have no idea why. I look back into our youngest son Caleb's lifestyle, riding a four-wheeler that Ronnie Holt was too generous to let him ride. Faster than his experience would allow, down a turn road, hit a bump. It launched into the air he saw what he was about to hit, he jumped off the back of the four-wheeler and stuck that four-wheeler in a hitch on a trailer filled with fertilizer. I was 300 yards away on the other side of the barn hearing that mm -hmm. jumped in the pickup not knowing what we would find. Oh, Lord, since my youth. You know, O.G. Killingsworth's favorite story, he still told it in his mid-90s, was at a time when he was in his youth in the barn underneath a lift, a pickup lift that he had bought, used, and got a good deal on. He had the pickup up above. He was working on something. Something snapped. A hydraulic line burst that pickup crashed to the floor with him standing underneath it. And when he came to, he was laying 10 feet over from the pickup against the wall without a scratch on him. And OG told that story every Sunday morning, standing in this hallway, handing out worship guides, about God's grace when he was young. The psalmist says, you, you, I've been with you since I was young. Since my mother's womb, you took me out. Lord, you have, you have surrounded me. I have been with you always, and, 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 and don't forget me now. He said, I have been like a portent. 
Portent is a hard word to interpret in the scripture. Sometimes it is like a warning. In the book of Deuteronomy, he speaks of a portent as being a, a warning to others. Better change your ways. This is coming. In Exodus, the portent is of the glory of God leading the people out. And it is a call to praise. Lord, this good things are coming because the Lord has given warning. It is both good and bad. Here, I think we can interpret it, the portent, as a good sign. The Lord has been with me since my youth. He has protected me. He has nurtured me, has cared for me. He has guided me. These good things are to come. Lord, I'm older now. My hair has turned gray. Don't forget me now. Verse 9, do not cast me off in the time of my old age. If you'll allow me to paraphrase, this is not the message or anything. This is Stacy. Lord, we've come this far. Don't fail me now. Don't forget me in the time of my old age. Don't forget me when my hair turns gray. There seems to be about this age thing, a, a universal creeping effect about age. Our wonderful secretary who does not need another job is very happy where she is. Had a birthday last week. Her children asked her, Mama, how old are you? She said, I'm 23. And Aiden said, gosh, you're old. <laughs> I said, did you tell Aiden there'd be no cake for him? <laughs> 23 doesn't sound old to me anymore. I was reading a crime story not long ago in the newspaper about this old creepy guy who was coming into this bar night after night and harassing the younger women. He was an old creepy guy and the women were filing police reports about this old creepy guy coming in. And then I read further down in the story and the old creepy guy was 45. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll give you the first, I'll give you the second adjective, but you can't use the first adjective when it comes to 45. You can go creepy. He can be creepy, but you, don't, you can't call him old at 45. But isn't that how it works? I look back now on my childhood and the people that I thought were old, well, those ages are not quite as old as they used to be. You probably know the story of Joe Rolino, or maybe you know him as the famous Joe Rolino, or the mighty Joe Rolino, or maybe you just know him as the world's strongest man. Pound for pound, Joe Rolino is the strongest man in the history of the United States. Five foot five, 125 pounds at his feats of strength. He picked up 435 pounds with his teeth. Five foot five, 125 pounds. But that's not the feat of strength he's most proud of. The thing he enjoyed that he's most proud of is that with the index finger on his right hand, five foot five, 125 pounds, Joe Rolino picked up 635 pounds off the floor and held it up. He swam every day off the coast of Long Island in the Atlantic Ocean, three miles until he was 90. In the 1950s, in a park in Long Island, a couple had wandered out onto the ice and they fell through the ice and the rescue squad was there and Joe Rolino put on a pair of swim trunks, dove through the hole in the ice and retrieved those two bodies out from underneath that ice in that pond with nothing but trunks. When he was 104 years old, he walked five miles every day <clears throat> until the day when out on his five-mile walk at 104, he stepped out between two cars and was hit by a minivan. A life filled of feats of strength ended on a rather common note. His obituary said, gone while still going strong. You see, the thing about the stories about Joe Rolino is, is that, that the strength of our youth does not last forever. 
the mightiness of which we depend when we were young, leave us rather quickly. And if you read the aging studies, the first sign of aging for most of us is a hardening of our diaphragm. That diaphragm begins to harden and suddenly you can't breathe as easily as you did when you were young. That's why marathon runners hit about 28 or 30 and they're not as good as they were. Which means most of us start aging at 28. It comes upon us. It has a way of creeping into our lives And the psalmist said, you've been with me my whole life. Don't fail me now. Missy Buchanan lives in north central Texas area, north of Dallas, out in the rural environment. Missy, Missy goes into retirement homes, pulls up a chair, and listens to people tell their stories. She's written several books. She listens for wisdom. She listens for life lessons. She listens for attitude. She had to wrote a book in 2010 called Don't Write My Obituary Just Yet. And it's full of inspirational stories like the story she tells about Nora Lee. She got a tip from a friend about you need to go visit with Nora Lee. And so she called Nora Lee and it went straight to voicemail. And when Nora Lee answered her call several hours later, she said, well, I have 22 pecan trees on my place and my brother and I have gathered up 52 pounds of pecans this afternoon. We're going to shell them tomorrow, she said. She's 84. She does not know stop. Nora Lee teaches Sunday school. She goes to exercise class four days a week. She bakes. She gathers pecans. She sings in the choir. So she and Missy met for lunch one day and they're sitting there at the table in the small town having lunch and everybody that comes in the, in the restaurant either nods, says hello, or calls her by name. She said, Nora Lee must be the most popular person in this town. And then when the meal is over, the waitress comes over and says, Nora Lee, your meal has been taken care of today. And Missy said, well, what a surprise. And Nora Lee said, oh, no, not really. It happens all the time. She said, it's a small town. Missy thought, well, maybe it happens all the time for you. The day they met had been the four-month anniversary of the loss of Nora Lee's husband. She said, I got in trouble with a lady in my Sunday school class. She said, three weeks after my husband died, I went to the movies. And it came up in Sunday school that I didn't know how to grieve right because I had gone to the movies. So Nora Lee said, I told him in Sunday school, well, my husband and I both had a conversation. If whenever, whichever goes first, you keep living. So I told my Sunday school class, he died, I didn't. I'm going to keep living. That book is full of those kind of stories. Her latest book, is talking to God in your old age. And from all these interviews, she gathers all these ideas and then she puts them against the Psalms. She has one that she wrote for Psalm 39 called Frugal. Let me read it to you. I think some of you may know where she's coming from. When you don't know how long you'll live, it's hard not to care about money. Well, I have enough to last me. That question never strays far from my mind. Some, some people think I'm a cheapskate. They snicker at my fuddy-duddy ways like, like saving coupons and taking advantage of the early bird specials. They don't understand why I cringe at the price of things. Just thinking about money eats away at my peace of mind. Sure, I'd like to be more generous. I'd like to take my family out to dinner more often and buy the grandkids extravagant gifts. But I don't know what I can afford. The last thing I want to do is run out of money and become a burden to someone. If only I knew how much longer I'd live, then that's the unknown in the math of this equation of life. 
Maybe I'll live five years, maybe 15, or maybe I'll die tomorrow. Dear God, help me to be wise, but not obsessed with thriftiness. Help me to lose my grip on money and grab a hold of you instead. In the uncertainties of life, I will trust you. For the length of my days is a sacred mystery. Some of you know exactly what that reflection is about. Financial experts tell us when we're young, we need to start saving for our retirement. And our retirement needs to be the number one priority of every financial decision. They will tell you, if you have to choose between saving for retirement and sending your kids to college, you save for retirement, make your kids take out loans. They will say, people will loan your money, kids your money to go to college. They will not loan you money to retire. You make sure you save for retirement. But when you're 25, you got a lot of time for that. And when you're 35, you'll get caught up later. But when you're 50, 55, if you haven't started taking care of that, that becomes the obsession of your life, just like Missy captures in that reflection. Her reflection on Psalm 71 is this. I haven't always been old. I haven't always been old. I suppose it just seems that way to people at the senior center where I live. Not so long ago, I had thick chestnut hair. My knees were limber and I could jog with ease. But here in this center, people only know me as the gray-haired lady in room 205. It's as though I came to this place without a past. What about all the things I did in my younger days? They, don't they matter? Things like hula dancing and fly fishing. Or that I owned my own business and married my high school sweetheart. Around here, it seems your identity doesn't begin until you're 80. But God, you know every inch of the terrain of my long life. It's a story that began decades ago. I'm not just another gray hair. I'm more than a room number. I have stories to share about how you've been faithful in life's ups and downs. And others have stories too. Lord, give me a renewed appreciation for my long life. Verse 6 of Psalm 71. Upon you I have leaned my, since birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually on you. I've been like a portent to many, but you're my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Don't cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. J.W. Archie was born in 1909. Birmingham, Alabama newspaper wrote a story about him on his 100th birthday that he was associate pastor of the Macedonian Baptist Church in Thomas, Alabama. I found that story and I wondered, that's 10 years ago. Surely J.W. is not still pastoring the Macedonia Baptist Church in Thomas, Alabama. So I found the contact information for the journalist at the Birmingham newspaper, and he's still there. I called him. I said, 10 years ago, you wrote a story about J.W. Thomas being 100 years old, pastoring Macedonia Baptist Church in Thomas, Alabama. And he said, I remember that story. I said, I can't find anything out about him. He said, he's still there. 110, associate pastor. He says he doesn't have the energy that he used to. And the doctor 
made him start taking Lipitor when he was 99. That's the only medicine he takes. He goes to bed at 6.30 and gets up at 7 and spends some time gardening in the, during the week. He likes black-eyed peas and okra, and he gardens that, and puts up enough for the winter. Still lives in the same house that he and his wife moved into in 1941. She died in 1987. He spent his career shoveling coal into boilers for the steel mill in Thomas, Alabama. Pastoring in the evenings, pastoring on the weekends. When the journalist was there that Sunday morning, J.W. was offering the invocation. He said, thank the Lord for last night's sleep and thank the Lord for this morning's rise. Bring home wandering minds and scattering thoughts. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And thank God. Greg Garrison, the journalist, asked him, do you have any secrets for living to be 100, 110 years old? He said, I ain't got no secrets, just a little wisdom. He said, treat everybody straight and trust God for his word. Do you, do you remember your baptism? Do you remember what it was like when your faith was fresh and new and certain? Life's full of bumps and bruises and hard times and twisting curves. Oh, Lord, don't fail us now. In you, oh, Lord, I take refuge. Never let me be put to shame. Do you remember your baptism? Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for a psalmist leads us to reflect on your goodness. The times in our youth when you protected us from our ignorance times when you protected us from our courage. The times, Father, you held our hands when we were foolish. And Lord, we thank you for the times that you've held our hands in tragedy and did not abandon us. Lord, help us in the circumstances of life to hold on, to trust, to believe, to remember you're not going to forsake us just because our hair turns gray. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And this psalm of confidence of God's care we offer you the opportunity to claim faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to say, I believe. Some of you are here looking for a church home today. You come and join with us. Some of you are here, you have needs in your life and you've got the words of the psalmist, don't fail me now. Come and let's pray together. Let's stand and you respond as the Spirit leads you.